Adam. A lot of these spring sports getting in to their postseason. Baseball and softball rounding towards near the end of their regular season. What all is happening out there? Baseball in good shape as they head towards that postseason. We mentioned it a little bit earlier, but they took two out of three from Virginia Tech this past weekend at Boshamar Stadium. Tar Heels now 17-7 and seven in the Coastal. Puts them pretty comfortably ahead of Virginia and Duke, both of which are 14-10. and 10. So got a cushion going into just two more ACC series. Carolina hosts Louisville and then goes to Duke. Tar Heels are off this weekend for exams. Jason DeCaro, the ACC Pitcher of the Week, after he was tremendous on Friday night. First Carolina freshman to win that award since 2017. Hmm. Uh, seven shutout innings, career high, eight strikeouts, only gave up four hits, walked just two. And remember, this was a Virginia Tech team that was averaging nine runs a game and didn't get a runner past second base against him. So DeCaro, now that he's turned 18, he's just really shutting people down. Yeah. Uh, came into college at, at 17 years old and has been a terrific addition to that staff that now will be without Folger Boaz. They were already without Jake Knapp. So you're already down two Friday night pitchers, but the Tar Heels still looking good. Adam, so you, as we referenced, you were on the call for ACC Network Extra this weekend, and you got to say, I mean, not that you and I haven't been following the Tar Heels, but you saw every moment of three consecutive games. What stood out to you in seeing them? I would say two things that I have noticed in watching them and that we have said some here on the air. One is that Carolina's lineup is – is there aren't any easy outs there. One through nine, I feel like Carolina um, has some dudes up there at the plate. There may be different strengths, but I think they have guys who can really swing the bat from top to bottom. And it feels like Carolina's bullpen is pretty good, and also they seem to be more comfortable – with more guys out of that bullpen. And I'm not – I don't know what that exact number is. I don't know if it's 10 or 8 or 6 or whatever. But it feels like they they feel they have some confidence in multiple arms out of that pen, which is good news considering they are down two starters, which is just hard for anybody to absorb. Yeah, the, the bullpen, you've got maybe three that you feel really good about. Dalton Pence – Matthew Mateus and Matt Post, and you know those three in any close, important game are going to pitch. I think if you're going to advance as far as you want to, you'd like to find maybe one more that you would put into that group so that you go into any weekend-type series feeling like there's four guys in the bullpen who you put in a tie game feel good about it. Connor Bovair is kind of moving that way, and Kyle Percival is like, he's got one foot in, but he's – Knocking on the door. Yeah. And so can I come in, guys? <laughs> but if you could get both of those, then then you're in good shape. Um, a lot of really young talent, both on the mound and at the plate, honestly. But it's really showed up on the mound. Um, the offense is elite. It's one of the like, we've seen some pretty good Carolina offenses, but there was always kind of when you got down to the bottom of the order. You, if you're the other team, I think you felt like we can get some outs there. I'm not sure you really feel that way against this Carolina offense. As the bottom of the order is pretty tough. The bottom of the order would have hit in the middle mm. a couple of years recently. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, I, there's and this is in no way to like call out. I'm not trying to call out anybody. There's some guys who played a bunch the last couple of years that haven't played that much this year, and I say that just to say I think Carolina's talent from top to bottom is better than it was just a couple of years ago. Parks Harbor, big addition. Yeah, in that in that middle of the offense, so it's not just Vance Hunn Vance Hunnica. And I'll get Osuna. Alberto Osuna's gotten much better. Yeah, I mean he he's striking out less. He's just making better contact. And in the one game Carolina lost against Virginia Tech, he darn near tied it in the bottom of the ninth with a a deep fly ball that if it had gone just about anywhere else in the park other than straight center, it would have been a home run. Casey Cook's hitting the ball out of the ball. Gosh, park. yeah, he's yeah. So, and that's how you have the type of offense that put up big numbers in the two midweek wins over Charlotte and William and Mary. Carolina run rule wins in both of those. Honeycutt. No. I support the run rule, by the way. Oh, yeah. Well, so, this should have been done many years earlier. Yes. And so, if you basically, if a team is up by 10 or more runs after seven, correct, then the game's over. Why? I guess. I mean, how many. If this situation played out a thousand times, could a team come back maybe once? Sure. 
but Adam, it just I I just think it's better. Yes. Yeah, there there are no downsides to this. Um Honeycutt now sitting on fifty five home runs, two short of Carolina's career record. Uh Tariels again off this weekend, but then four big home games next week. Campbell on Tuesday, home series against Louisville. I think the wild card is the defense, which as we have talked about, in the outfield has been great. In the infield has sometimes been suspect. But here lately, the mm-hmm. Tariels have only committed, I think, two errors in their last twelve games and maybe two errors in their last three ACC series. If you could play that level of defense, in conference games only, Carolina's second in the conference in fielding percentage. If you can play that kind of defense, you're a different team than you were a couple months ago when I think teams felt like if they put pressure on Carolina, the Tar Heels might throw the ball around. If you don't do that, you got something. It is. It's hard to definitively say because baseball, more than any sport, it has the most variables that come into play, in my opinion. I, they just this team seems really good to me, Adam. They they just seem really good. I they still have to finish the regular season the right way, but they've positioned themselves to be at home uh, in the postseason, which is a huge advantage. Um, and I don't even know. I guess the right word. I guess the word I'm. They seem to have a confidence about them that they feel like they're never out of a game too. And again, that's for me watching. That is in no way me speaking to anybody or anything like that. It's just the impression I get by watching them. Well, look at the lineup. Yeah. I mean, you you would have to be in a run rule situation to feel like you're out of it. Get that national seed. But then, as we've said, the baseball postseason, one of the hardest postseasons yeah. there is. It's long. There's so many different things that can happen. It's tough. But uh, uh, to this point, Carolina has done what it needs to do to put itself in good position. One of those things that can happen in the postseason is you can win a national title. Yeah, That's what women's tennis did last year. And they're back on the quest again to do it. Uh, the Tar Heels open up play today against Navy, 6 o'clock uh, in Chapel Hill. The winner will then face the winner of Wisconsin and William and Mary Saturday in Chapel Hill. Tar Heels, one of 16 NCAA regional sites and in the discussion to, to win a national championship. I, don't, I did not see this, so I'm asking because I don't know. They do see the – the teams correctly or I correct believe so but we don't know i'll double check because i don't know what seed. i mean i know they are one of those top 16 but i don't know what their seed is specifically but we'll double check it one number one seed that we definitely know is men's golf mm. men's golf one of six number one seeds in the ncaa championships so that means they'll host 12 other teams and 10 individuals in the ncaa regionals which are may 13th through the 15th at finley the other uh, top teams in that mix here that'll be in Chapel Hill, number two, Alabama, number three, Georgia Tech. We know they're always good. Number four, East Tennessee State. The top five teams from Chapel Hill advance to the NCAA championships May 24th through the 29th in Carlsbad, California. Carolina won just five teams nationally to advance out of the regionals in each of the last six NCAA championships. Tariel's number four overall seed in women's tennis, Adam. One is Oklahoma State, who is 27 and 0 and is hosting the what is it? it's from eight on, is that right? I think that's right. So they would host from the round of eight through the championship is in Stillwater. So certainly one of the favorites out there. Uh two seed is Stanford, traditionally very good. Three seed Michigan. Elizabeth Scotty told Adam and me all of this off the air, but um, I mean, she said that, that she, would be yeah, mix, that yeah. these would be the teams that would be in the mix yeah. at the top of the national rankings. But I'm now just relaying it to you. I think if seeds hold, Carolina would face Texas A&M, the 13, which I, in the round of 16, yes, Texas A&M, pretty good, and just got back a, a really good player at the top of their lineup. So that that's not a normal four 13. They're they're very good. Other ACC teams uh, that are in the national rankings for this event, Virginia is the number five. NC State is the 15 overall seed. I already mentioned Stanford at two, and uh, Cal is also in there, Adam. So ACC, job, ACC. ACC women's tennis about to be bringing the heat. Yeah. Uh, men's tennis also bringing the heat because they're back in the NCAA yeah. tournament field again. 
They'll go to Knoxville, Tennessee to play Memphis this morning at 10 o'clock. The winner would play the winner of Tennessee and East Tennessee State. A lot of local flavor there in yeah. Knoxville. Uh, that match would be on Saturday. Carolina, nine trips to the quarterfinals in the last nine NCAA tournaments. Hmm. Sam Paul, consistent. Yes. Uh, men's lacrosse, some individual awards, oh. but not as good a conclusion to the season team-wise. Uh, Carolina would not advance to the ACC tournament, so they will not be in that field in Charlotte. Uh, however, Owen Duffy wins ACC Freshman of the Year, just the sixth winner of that award in Carolina history. He's the first Carolina freshman to be all ACC since 2011. Led the team with 32 goals, 54 points. Tariels did finish the regular season on a high note, beating Duke, who was number two in the country, uh, 15 to 12. So that was a good win. Um, seven points from Logan McGovern, former pod guest, who was uh, ACC Offensive Player of the Week. Carolina's first win over a top three team since May of 2021. Hmm. So some positives and some negatives. You'd like to be able to carry that momentum into the ACC tournament. Uh, and then softball. Went down to number 16, Florida State. Lost that series. The finale was a close one, 2-1. to one. Uh, Tar Heels are done with their regular season. They didn't play in the midweek this week. Uh, and then ACC championships begin in Durham on May the 8th. So a bit of an extended break there for softball. And we don't know the women's lacks bracket yet, correct? Not as of this. As you and I are recording. Right. 